So let's dive in and talk about some details about human locomotion. Today we're going to talk specifically about the walking gait cycle and how we can use measurements of the ground reaction force to understand the dynamics of walking. So walking is a cyclic event. We take a step and then another step and we cycle through walking in that way. It's very useful to define a walking gait cycle, which I'm showing here. The gait cycle begins at foot contact, 0% of the gait cycle, and ends at the next foot contact again. So you see the right leg contacting the foot once, contacting the foot again, and that's what we call the gait cycle. And it just repeats over and over. Now we can divide the gait cycle into a stance phase and a swing phase. The stance phase, naturally, is when your foot is on the ground. The swing phase is when your foot when your leg is swinging through the air. Now the stance phase is longer than the swing phase, so there's a period when both legs are in the stance phase. That's this critical period I call double support in the last section. Now, during double support, there's this interaction between the legs where the rear limb is supporting body weight and propelling you forward, while the front leg is supporting body weight and modulating your speed. So there's some negative ground reaction force in that situation. So this interaction between the legs is critical for the energy efficiency of walking. And we'll see how that comes up in the dynamic model of walking in just a few minutes. Now there's some simple spatial temporal measurements of gait that can be quite useful and I've listed them here. Cadence is simply the frequency at which you're taking steps. The step length is the distance traveled by one foot. The stride length is two times the step length. Step width is the side-by-side -side distance. So how far apart are your feet? Now, what's interesting is when you're learning to walk, that step width is quite large. If you look at a toddler beginning to, to walk, they have a wide step length. That narrows to quite a narrow gait uh, as we develop a mature gait. But then if there are balance impairments, you can also imagine that that step width is an indicator that someone might be fighting balance and adopting a wider stance. There's a toe out angle as well. So the toe out angle is shown here, and that's the angle that your feet make with respect to the line of progression. So if these are your feet, and they're pointed straight along the line of progression, a toe out angle is how far they're towed out or how far they're towed in. Now normally, and there's variation in this, people are towed out about 10 or 15 degrees as they walk. So that's just some key simple measurements of space and time with respect to walking. Now ground reaction forces are absolutely critical. And they're critical because we know Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. And this is really the only external force acting on the body during walking, so it determines the dynamics of walking. What I'll show you here is just a, a video of the ground reaction force during walking. So you see it starts on the heel, it rises, falls below body weight, and then rises up again to body weight we can look more carefully at this with these phases of walking. So during the 0% of the gait cycle, at heel strike, you see the ground reaction force is just beginning to develop. The center of pressure, that is the centroid of the ground reaction force, moves from the heel forward on the foot, and the ground reaction force rises to above body weight here during this period we call loading. In mid stance, you see the foot is flat on the ground and the ground reaction force is nearly vertical. Later in the stance phase, we call push off, the heel has risen from the ground, the ground reaction force is again above body weight, it's vertical, and it's pushing you forward. The stance phase ends at toe off which you can see here. 
with a toe just leaving the ground. So that's the stance phase from foot contact to foot off. And that's about 60% of the gait cycle. Once the foot leaves the ground, we enter the swing phase. Ground reaction forces are critical to understand during walking. So what I'm showing here is a diagram of the ground reaction force versus percentage of gait cycle. So you see at 0% of the gait cycle, the foot is contacting the ground, the ground reaction force begins to develop. The stance phase lasts slightly over 50% of the gait cycle. And then there's no ground reaction force under the foot during the swing phase. Now the duration of this stance phase varies with walking speed. The slower you walk, the longer the stance phase is. As you walk faster and faster, that stance phase duration shrinks and there's less and less period where both legs are on the ground. You can imagine as you walk faster and faster, this period of double support shrinks and then you eventually have no double support and begin to launch into a flight phase. So that's the transition from walking to running. Now, if you plot the ground reaction force over the period of the gait cycle, you can see some interesting features. So I'm showing here on the right-hand plot the vertical component of the ground reaction force and the horizontal component of the ground reaction force. Remember, the vertical component is what holds you up and supports your body weight, and the horizontal component of the ground reaction force modulates your speed. Now, I can take that vector of ground reaction forces and break it into its components and plot the vertical and horizontal ground reaction force. And that's what I've done here. So here's the vertical ground reaction force shown here and the horizontal ground reaction force shown here. As I mentioned previously, it's interesting that we don't just stand on our limb and get a body weight support and then unload our limb. We load our limb, it's a dynamic process that goes above body weight and then in mid stance it actually dips down below body weight and then during push off it rises again above body weight prior to toe off. Now the horizontal ground reaction force also has some interesting features. So at initial foot contact, we see a negative ground reaction force. It's smaller than the vertical ground reaction force and it's negative because we have defined negative as pointing uh, opposite of the direction of progression. So that force produces an acceleration of the mass center that slows you down. So we have a decrease in velocity in this early stance phase. In the mid stance phase, you see this horizontal ground reaction force transitions from being negative directed backward to positive directed forward. So here it's a acceleration in the direction that you're progressing, which increases your velocity during this part of the stance phase. So you can see a simple measurement of ground reaction force can provide tremendous insight into the accelerations of the mass center and how we're moving. Now, to make measurements of ground reaction force, we use a force plate. This is a fancy scale. You can imagine when you stand on a scale, you get a measurement of your body weight. But if you move up and down on your scale, the needle on your scale is going to be moving and you won't get an accurate measurement of the ground reaction force at that instant of time. So a force plate is a platform that's stiff and has embedded sensors, strain gauges or piezoelectric crystals that give you a readout, an electric readout, depending on how much the force plate is being deformed. We can embed this in the ground and as you walk over it, you get a measurement of the ground reaction force. Now there's some key features of a force plate. We wanna have number one, minimal crosstalk. What does that mean? You saw that we were trying to separate the vertical and horizontal ground reaction forces. So we want to be able to separate those and not have a vertical force read out as horizontal or vice versa. We've also been talking about the ground reaction forces as if they're planar, where it's only vertical and fore aft. But in fact, we have a side to side ground reaction force as well. And we want to get independent signals for vertical, fore aft, 
and side to side because all of those influence how the mass center is accelerating. The vertical will influence the vertical acceleration. The fore aft will influence the forward backward acceleration of the mass center. And the medial lateral will indicate the side to side acceleration of the mass center. That's critically important for maintaining balance. We want to be able to measure the, the force accurately at any point on the, ground, on the force plate. So we usually hide force plates from people so they don't target them. You can imagine if I'm walking and I'm in a, a subject in an experiment, I might uh, see the force plate down there. I'm trying to be a good experimental subject. I see it on the ground and I go walking along and I, I step right on the ground reaction, the force plate and I say, good, that was really normal gait, I, I got it, and uh, that's not what we want, right? We want the, the force plates, the instrument, to be invisible. So we usually embed them in the floor, have them be the same color as the floor, and have people then just walk normally and we record the forces. And we'll have them do it dozens of times so that we get good recordings. To do that, people might step on different parts of the force plate, so we want to get accurate measurements at any point on the force plate. We also want to get good frequency response. By frequency response, I mean we want to collect forces at a high enough frequency that we can capture rapid events. Like if we're studying running, the time over which your foot contacts the ground, if we want to characterize that dynamics, that's a short period of time and we need to get many recordings. So we want to get upwards of 200 hertz, for example, or more in ground reaction force measurements. That's good frequency response. And of course, force plates are used to measure these ground reaction forces. So let me just summarize some key points for this first set of uh, mini lectures. First is that walking is a cyclic activity, and we use the gait cycle to characterize walking. Ground reaction forces are very helpful for understanding the dynamics of walking. The vertical ground reaction force is directed up, and that supports body weight. The fore-aft ground reaction force modulates speed. We can understand this because we know Newton's second law, F equals ma. We measure forces, and so we know a lot about the accelerations of the mass center. And we'll see why that's so critical when we write some equations calculating mass center accelerations and velocities and positions and energy in walking in the next lecture.